So this is the Aperture Laser uh, current tile master. This comes with a 2 watt laser and um, I'm going to be actually filming a disassembly video in the hopes that it aids folks for reassembly. You pretty much, after you watch the video, you should be able to start at the end and work your way backwards per se. Um, as far as tools, I've got a 3mm, 2.5, and 2mm, and I've got a, just a few of those. I like these ball sockets, they get in nice tight spaces. There's not too many of those, but you might want a ball socket 2mm for getting up in here. There's one uh, angled area that's hard to get to right there, but all the rest you can pretty much get with a straight shot of a wrench or a screwdriver so a two millimeter two and a half millimeter and three millimeter is all you should really need to put the entire machine together to explain the electronics side this is the new Rothman 32 uh, this is what most of the tile masters should be shipping with uh, that come out I say most because things happen and individual you know I let individual customers know if you need an adapter, this just adapts a more common 5 amp power supply. Your main power switch, this is your laser connection port, it's a 3 wire. Um, and this is your Y1, Y2, and X axis plugs, which are usually labeled. One important thing to note, uh, this is the 14 pin socket for the LX Extra board. Uh, this doesn't come with the LX Extra board, um, but it does have limit switches. The limit switches ground wire plugs into the second pin from the top on the left, and then the X and Y axes limit switch wires plug into the one, two, three, the fourth and fifth pin on the right on the Rothman 32, and any other uh, board with the 14 pin connector that has the same pin out as the LX Extra boards and the LX Maker boards. When installing the laser module, I route the power cable on the underside of this bracket and secure with a zip tie. This acts like a cable chain to keep this out of the way as the laser head moves back and forth. And I do the same thing to stabilize the wires coming off of the limit switch over here. I also stabilize the wires right here so that there won't be too much back and forth motion which could hopefully break anything. At this point, I've used my 2mm Allen to remove the four bolts. I clip the two zip ties holding the wires in. I remove the limit switches and I left these parts here. So now I've disconnected all the electronics up here, including the limit switches, the laser, Y1 and 2 motors, and the X motor, as well as would have disconnected the power supply. So at this point, I'd like to actually talk about two things. We're going to disassemble this, but um, we're also going to be setting the belt tension. So how you set the belt, you set the belt tension loosely with this bar for the x-axis and this will get your belt tension within the ballpark but you take a three millimeter and you loosen these two right here and then this allows you to easily slide this back and then you retighten your t-nuts and this will set your belt tension on the x-axis and similarly on the y-axis you loosen up these four and when you connect, when you're originally connecting this belt to here, you'll use these four zip ties. Uh, that's why you don't have to take these zip ties off. They will arrive connected. Uh, this gets you close, and then you come over here, and you can actually slide this block forward and back. So you just set the tension here, and then you tighten one. I like to use an X pattern. Tighten the second and the third and the fourth. So this is how you'll be also putting the machine together and taking it apart, but also 
um, setting your belt tension on the X and Y axes. So now we're at a major disassembly point. I've disconnected all the major belts off of the axes and I just want to say something. Never ever in the construction or disassembly of these machines will you ever be removing this part called a pillow block from the linear uh, rail itself. Uh, you don't ever want to let these pillow blocks come off because the BBs can get lost and then you'll have to replace a linear rail in order to assure smooth movement. So if you're ever taking this apart or assembling it, biggest thing to remember is never let these pillow blocks come off of the... So when assembling this machine, or in my case disassembling, I take the y-axis rails and I start by I'll thread I'll thread these on loose with two there and two there that holds that on slide the x-axis bar in um, make sure you align your t-nuts and then I come over this is all mocked up we pretty much just slide the end of this rail on this and then thread the screws into the t-nuts so this is basically the last video this is about what you should start with um, these are the cross rails uh, they always have the 90 degree brackets and the feet on them and they're the same so you can put one in the front one in the back um, your Y rails are uh, this is the X rail your Y rails are also uh, pretty much the same at this point and they just need to be slid on to the ends of the X rail I like to start with the X axis slide the two Y rails on and then install my crossbars.